welcome again students we are doing john keats's ode to autumn and in our previous video class we had studied the first stanza of the of this great ode and before going to the next let us read again the first stanza of ode to autumn season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatches run to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core to swell the goat and plump the hazel shells with the sweet kernel to set budding more and still more lighter flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their clean cells so in the first stanza of this ode we have seen that autumn is personified and addressed as the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness when all the fruits and flowers fruits are ripened and flowers are blooming and it seems that with the in collaboration with sun she is conspiring how to load and bless the nature with fruits and flowers so all the nature is in abundance in the first stanza the bees the honey bees are gathering sweets uh, fr from and fragrances from flowers and their honeycombs are over brimmed with the sweetness so let us proceed further what aspect of autumn the poet wants to present before us who hath not seen thee oft amid thy stall sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook or by a cedar press with patient look thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours so in this second stanza the poet describes the occupations of autumn and autumn is here personified as well as in the previous stanza here autumn is personified as a winnower as a reaper and as a gleaner and as a cedar presser autumn is here seen as a woman who performs the tasks of a winnowing reaping gleaning and cider pressing if anyone wants to see autumn he may go into the fields and he will see the women engaged in the winnowing operations while the breeze ruffles their locks of hair that's why he says who hath not seen thee means she is always present amid the stores the granary granaries in the fields so autumn is very much there in the fields as well 
and can be seen there and while the breeze ruffles their locks of hair this is one picture of autumn and secondly we see autumn in the shape of a reaper and she is reaping in the field who has been and autumn has been engaged in reaping corn but who in the course of her work is so overcome by the sleep inducing smell of poppies that she falls asleep with the result that the next row of corn remains unreaped half reaped furrows while she is as a reaper reaping the harvest so as a reaper she fell asleep by the inducing narcotic effect of the fume intense fragrance of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers and here thirdly sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy lead in head across a brook she here thirdly autumn may be seen in the character of a gleaner who is walking along steadily with the weight of grains upon her head crossing a stream across a brook and finally or by a cider cider praise with patient look the watches the last oozings hours by hours and finally autumn may be seen in the figure of a woman who is crushing the ripe apples in the wooden press to obtain their juice from the which cider cider is to be made this woman sits by the cider press and watches patiently the apple juice flowing out of the press drop by drop so all these four images are very this stanza is, is very picturesque and the images can be seen by our mind's eye and in the different roles as different people whether it is winnower or cleaner or reaper or cider presser she can be seen in the fields and the last as a cider presser is the image is very appealing and one can imagine that how how that cider presser is um, eager to have those drops of the apple juice so students we have seen that in the first stanza how the poet has personified autumn and in how the nature is in its bounty and how in the second stanza the autumn can be seen uh, in different roles so again personifications are there so the images are very appealing and picturesque so students we are going and proceeding toward the third and final stanza we shall take that in our next video till then you just read and enjoy the poem thank you